stakeholders group and to a lot of you guys this is going to be kind of redundant because you've lived through this with me um, and I'm recording well, they're recording this for my professor Dr. Perot um, and I'm so excited to basically go to bat for our group and all the wonderful things that we've been doing um, for a little over a year um, I will say if you have questions feel free to, to blurt them out during the presentation I'm totally into interactive <laughs> um, and if I forget something or you have a highlight or a milestone that you really think should be added, please let me know because this is kind of like a trial run for when I officially submit later this evening. So let's talk about our stakeholders group. So I first kind of identified the needs of business owners in our community. Um, we needed a voice. We we're a little too small for a chamber of commerce um, on our own. We're a little too far away from everything going on in Tazewell. We're kind of a little too Virginia for our West Virginia folks. So I said, who is there to go to bat for us? We need to have some form of way to get all of our business owners together in order to figure out what we can do to be a little more successful. I wanted to um, put an emphasis on organized events such as meetings, destination events, and more involvement with the town events and sponsorships like getting involved with Autumn Jamboree, the tree lighting, and so on and so forth. I also wanted to uh, focus on education opportunities by providing social media courses, um, courses on management styles, uh, better business practices such as like bookkeeping and accounting, and collaboration with Bluefield West Virginia eventually. We also really wanted to focus on growth and retention um, and find an easier way to keep our youth in the area because currently, currently uh, Bluefield State recruits a lot locally, we know that. Bluefield College tends to recruit a little more out, but aren't, we aren't retaining these people. A lot of my classmates have gone on and moved on because there's just not a whole lot to do and the quality of life isn't uh, conducive to folks my age. So I wanna work a lot with um, inter internships, um, community outreach, and job opportunities for um, millennials. So I want to talk about our projects. This is where I really get to boast about what we've been doing as stakeholders for the past year. Um, our first was Small Business Saturday. You can click. Um, back in 2018, we had 10 businesses commit to being open and being part of this video that I shot on my iPhone. Uh, the Facebook event reached a little over 1,000 people and had 5,000 impressions. Um, and I will note, reach is how many different people saw the event <coughs> and impressions are how many times this event popped up on a um, Facebook advertisement. Uh, the video from, okay. Did I hit it? I think that's a little bit easier The battery might be starting now. Okay, I'm just gonna project. So the video promotion reached a little over 6,000 people. Um, it had over 10,000 impressions, which was huge. Um, and this really started to echo in our community. I know I had a lot of people like, hey, I saw that video you shot, and I'm like, I know I did it on an iPhone, which is a little crazy. Um, but we had a really good turnout for Small Business Saturday, and you could actually kind of see crowds of people walking, going from business to business, typically starting at New Graham and making their way up the street, which is really cool, and that's kind of unheard of on a normal business day. The second huge takeover was doing an open house um, in 2019. It was supposed to be a downtown open house, but I had a couple people who were like, hey, I know I'm not in downtown, but I'd still like to be part of this event. I said, sure, why not? So we had Anytime Fitness, Big Blue Art, The Clothesline, The Cornerstone, Country Living Primitives, Double Days Prowl Around Shop, <laughs> Graham Jewelry, Leslie Ann's, Margaret's Country Corner, Metaphor <laughs> Outdoors, and New Graham Knives all be part of this downtown open house. And it was actually pretty successful. Um, and what was really unique is that we pushed for our businesses to promote other businesses. So if I'm working in the Cornerstone, I said, hey, make sure you go to Double J's because they also have some really neat things. And Double J's will say, hey, check out that new boutique that just opened up the clothesline. 
the clothes might say, hey, did you go next door to country living permits? Because they think they have, might have what you're looking for. So um, a lot of businesses also provided refreshments um, and educated customers on other places that they could stop. And we really made this a community event. And it was really neat to see everyone working cohesively in order to promote our downtown. And that did reach over a thousand people, which is neat. So Small Business Saturday this year went far more amazing than I could have ever imagined. Um, we had a partnership with Local College and Christy Berry. Um, 16 businesses committed to being part of this video. And six of those businesses knew that they weren't going to be part of Open House, but they still wanted to be part of this video promoting Bluefield, Virginia. And of those 16 businesses, 10 businesses were open and recognized by American Express as being part of Small Business Saturday. $80 was spent on a Facebook event boost, $80 was spent on a Facebook video boost, and originally $80 was supposed to be given to Chris D. Berry, but luckily uh, a lot of our businesses were so um, thankful for <laughs> being so willing to go all over the place, we ended up giving Chris $155 from what we raised for the video. So everything was spent really well. The event reached over 2,800 people and had over 10,500 impressions. The promotional video has reached almost 3,000 people and had over 6,500 impressions, which is huge for a video. And you may notice that kind of the metrics may have changed from year to year. Facebook's really cracked down on algorithms, um, so we're constantly having to reinvent ways to get more boosts on Facebook. The, um, what was really neat is AJ Robinson called me and she said, hey, visit Taswell and Charlie Stacy would like to put together a radio advertisement for your businesses that are committed to be open on Small Business Saturday. So I was like, this is, this is great, this is amazing. Everything started coming together. And what was neat is that could have been done, of course, before the stakeholders, but Charlie's been here for about every meeting since April. Um, AJ's been involved from the gate and they saw that need and they saw that these Bluefield Virginia businesses weren't as promoted as everybody else and they answered the call. And this is our small business Saturday promotional video. Right here, okay, so we Saturday, it's not a video, it's just an ad. Double Chase Pile Around Shop, Leslie Anus, Hunter and Lennon, The Cornerstone, The Clothesline, Venture Printing, Brand Jewelry, Margaret's Country Corner, New Grand Knives, Friends by the Way, Big Blue Arts, Anytime Fitness, Misty's Bronze and Beauty, and Beth Core Outdoors will have you ready for the holidays before you know it. Visit Bluefield, Virginia, and visit Tazewell County. Take advantage of Small Business Saturday, November 30. And this is our promotional video by Christy Berry. Hit it one more time, the arrow.
We're opening lines of communication between businesses and students for future partnerships and internships. Um, by forging this relationship with the college, the business department, and the communications department, we'll allow students to fill these gaps for our businesses who need specialized talent to make their business successful. Um, it was also mentioned that we uh, had a lack of signage. So our community development director, B.J. Roberts, volunteered to look into grants and other ways the town can provide signage or relief for that. Um, so together we hosted a stakeholders meeting and put an emphasis on stake claim. We invited Ken Keith, who is the economic and community development director for Marion, Virginia, to speak to our stakeholders and on how we can help the town of Marion, which is very similar to Bluefield, Virginia, um, apply for and become a Virginia Main Street. He also enlightened the stakeholders and town officials on multiple grants the town and individual businesses can apply for to improve the overall look of the downtown area. Um, one grant in particular would match a business owner's um, funds dollar for dollar to a certain, certain threshold, which is really neat. Um, so when using evaluation and control me um, metrics, I wanted to put a focus on increased attendance at our meetings um, the use of opportunities provided to the stakeholder. So how many of our businesses can hear what we have to offer, but how many of these businesses are actually taking this, um, taking our offer on multiple things that they can do to increase um, what they're doing. Um, increase interest in projects, and we wanted to increase events that require the participation of businesses such as our downtown open house. We need to have future events like that, whether it's combining um, open house and what's up, the tree lighting, as mentioned a couple weeks ago by Vicki, um, and these ideas and having us sit down together and say, hey, why don't we do open house during the tree lighting? Why don't we do another event during the autumn jamboree is what's going to help our community thrive. Growth. Um, so it was really neat as we had a Bluefield College student compete for the task of startup business grant. Um, his business is called The Grind and this is Colin O'Donnell, like BJ mentioned earlier. Uh, he wanted to fill the need for a coffee shop um, in, in Bluefield and his mission was finally crafted beverages and locally sourced artisan baked goods which embody the spirit of New York style cafe and bakery. All products will be crafted with the highest quality locally sourced ingredients combined with a variety of flavors that are unique to Bluefield, Virginia, as well as Tabletville County in Southwest Virginia. Um, let me find it in my notes since I can't read that. The project's imperative to the growth of the stakeholders because this will be the first member of our community who has gone out and really blasted something like this. Um, and it would really be really neat for him to, I was hoping it was going to be announced already, so I could kind of have a better idea if we got it or not. But this is a start, and by having him involved from the stakeholders before he has a business can be really encouraging to anyone else who's thinking about starting a business in our area. Hey, if Colin did it, you can too. In conclusion, I wanted to create um, a group conducive to collaboration, joint marketing efforts, and providing educational opportunities to aid in the revitalization <coughs> of the Bluefield, Virginia area. Um, we've seen a tremendous growth in the group since October 2018, and we've seen increased foot traffic during events. Uh, I learned quite a few things by starting the stakeholders group. Um, very few people knew that I was actually doing this for my master's degree because I didn't want people to say, oh, she's just doing it for her project and it's never gonna last after. Um, I was really surprised with all of the engagement I got considering and everyone's like, yeah, let's do this, let's keep going. When's the next meeting, what can I do? Um, there's always gonna be people who are gonna be overly involved and I have learned to cherish that and take 
everyone's opinion into consideration. And there's always going to be people who resist change. And no matter how many times I invite them to a meeting or invite them to be part of something, they don't even have to, to really do anything. I just have to give them signage to put up in their window. They're not going to do it. I really had to hone in on my sales pitch and pitching our group to people. Um, and I've had to learn, I'm an outsider. I'm not from here. I'm not remotely from here. I don't have any family from here. I had no stake in Bluefield, Virginia, and I had to earn the trust of these business owners in order to lead the way. Um, I know, I know I'm young. I know I don't have a lot of experience, um, but luckily I did own my own business before coming to Bluefield, which gave me some more insight. And I felt uh, the need and I've seen the grit um, that people from this area have, and that's all the motivation needed to move forward. Um, I've listened to all of her concerns, all the details, I've made mental notes. Um, I've had to learn to be vulnerable. Uh, when people are, I just can't do that. I understand, I know, I'm with you. How can I help you? What resources can I point you to? I have sought answers, I have fulfilled needs, I have exhausted resources, and if I can't do it, I will find somebody who can. Um, and most of all, I've learned to be a servant leader, and I really didn't know what that meant until I came to Bluefield College, and Bluefield College's leadership style is servant leadership. Um, and luckily, I had a boss who was a perfect display of servant leadership who led me by example. <laughs> and um, I learned to lead others from within, and have a servant heart in order to understand every issue that may arise. And my sponsors and stakeholders. So I use a lot of Bluefield's comprehensive plan in my paper. And if anyone's interested in reading more metrics like Cotter's change management theory and all these other theories that go into organizational leadership, by all means, I'll be happy to send you my paper. <laughs> um, I had a great interview with our Eastern District Supervisor, Charles Stacey. <coughs> I had a great interview with our Community Development Director, BJ Roberts, and I couldn't just tell you guys, hey, I'm interviewing you for my project. So surprise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> interviews with task allocation with my manager and co-sponsor, Vicki Mahood, who support made this entire group possible. Um, extensive interviews and guidance by my sponsor, Chris Bailey, who's part owner of Newgrand Pharmacy, and he has been there from the gate, I know he doesn't come to meetings, but he's the first person to say, yes, I'm pro stakeholders. Yes, you can have a meeting here. Yes, you can do stakeholders work on my dime. Yes, you can print all these copies. It doesn't matter, he is so for it. And he's so proud to see how much this group has grown. Uh, I've referenced Colin O'Donnell's project to compete in the Tesla Startup Business Grant Challenge and Chris D. Berry, who shot and produced our entire promotional video. Uh, and this is where I wanted to kind of open up the floor to the future. Um, so now that everyone knows that this was a project, what can we do to move forward with this group so it doesn't just start to fizzle and start to die? Um, how, how do we advance next? What's our next project? What are we gonna tackle next? Because if we tackled Small Business Saturday in a downtown open house and had promotional videos and Facebook boosting, that's it. That's been the biggest obstacle to cover was getting together. So now we're together. What are we going to do next? So I'm excited to see this group keep meeting. And that's, I think, that's it. You can press the button. Does it go to anything else? No. Okay. That's my project. six months, I think, putting all the data together. And it's funny looking back um, on everything I've done because uh, I've been told, oh, you're not challenging yourself. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. I could do more, I can do better. I can research this um, a million more times. Um, and I can't thank you all enough for letting me lead the way into starting this group. Um, yeah, thank you guys. That's awesome. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>